Coast Radio, 1070 AM, WKMB Sterling, Plainfield. for the Town Talker with Reverend Zechariah A. Jackson. Reverend Jackson is founding pastor of the Church of What's Happening Now, located in Plainfield, New Jersey. And now, the Town Talker, Reverend Zechariah Jackson. Oh, it's good coming to you. This is the Reverend Zechariah A. Jackson from the Church of What's Happening Now, Town Talker Talk Show. You know, it's that time of the year again, and that time when you know, we're getting ready for the whole political process again. You know, if this was 18, what, 1889, I mean, 1789, George Washington, <laughs> you right. know, you, you feel the spirit anyway, you know, you feel the spirit of the general, you know. And uh, this it's definitely that time again. And uh, last night I was at a woman's forum at um, Emerson School where the whole panel was there, the, uh, the mayoral ca uh, candidates and, and the mayor, of course, and the assemblyman, and I have one with me today, uh, Mark, Mark, Martin. Marks. Mark, uh, what is it? Mark. Martin is my first name. Martin Marks, I'm sorry. Marks. Yes, yeah, so I have Mr. Marks with me today, and uh, he's a Republican challenger, I imagine, you know. I'm a challenger, yes. And, uh, you know, it was, it was wonderful last night. I wish I had some clips of what happened last night, but there was a lot of things said. Bo will meet us, uh, will, uh, William, uh, Bo will meet us, Vastine will meet us in the parking lot at 5 o'clock and we're going to do a little shooting in the parking lot also in, in terms of uh, 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 doing a little clip for YouTube. We couldn't be here at this moment, but I just want the listening audience to know that the Reverend invited everybody, you see, and anything you want to say, you know what I mean, sure. <laughs> is between you and the Most High. <laughs> Absolutely. You see. Absolutely. So, um, all right. We are days, days away from the big day. Now, um, as you see, I'm uploading from the big day last year, the 11th month, 4th day, 08, when Obama got elected. I'm uploading that to YouTube now. Right. And I uh, just want to listen to the audience. That will be uploaded into 10 different DVDs because they, YouTube only take uh, 10 minutes at a time. All right. Uh we are a few days away from that day. What's going through your head at this moment? Well, I got to tell you, I have, uh, it's been an exhilarating campaign, and you, you certainly uh, can become fatigued yes. physically, mm -hmm. mentally, emotionally, maybe even spiritually, too. Yes. <laughs> uh, but I'll tell you, um, this election day for New Jersey is perhaps the most critical one in my memory, okay, and uh, I am 47 years old because, I, and I have great concern for this state. Uh, and as I said last night at the League of Women Voters Forum, this state is on the precipice of the abyss, wow. and I'm talking about insolvency. I'm talking about bankruptcy, uh, and it's a scary prospect. Um, you know, I I grew up in this area. I grew up in Cranford. I now live in Scotch Plains. I've been a Union County guy all my life. My entire family was from this area. Sure. Guess what? I'm the last one left. They've all moved. Packed up and gone. They've packed up and gone because they, they simply can't afford it anymore. They cannot afford well, well, this why, state. Well, why is the state so, I mean, in the situation that it's in? What, what's going on? Who's, in other words, who's making the money? Someone is getting paid. I mean, taxes are high. Well, we are, we are the highest tax state in the union, without a doubt. We are the okay. highest tax state in the union. We um, have the highest property taxes in the nation. Sure. And uh, we have an unemployment rate, highest in the region. People just cannot keep up. And that has caused about 500,000 people a net loss of citizens of this state who no longer can keep up and no longer can remain in this state. And if we continue in the same direction we're heading, um, we are in big trouble. And uh, this state is going to... Uh, wind up being bankrupt. Do you think the answer is the Republican Party? Because, you know, although now, now that we're getting, I, 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 I don't want to say foxy, <laughs> right. but we're getting where people are just judging party uh, candidates by sure. who they are right. and what they're for. But can, uh, what do you think? Well, I, I will tell you this, uh, 
there are, as I said last night, there are those people that will, will identify themselves as Democrats who would never think of voting for a Republican. Sure. And vice versa. There are many Republicans out there who would never think of voting for a Democrat. But we are at a critical stage right now where I think we need to dismiss ourselves of that notion and realize that we are on uh, a rail to oblivion in this state. And for the last 10 years or so, it has been the Democratic Party that has controlled and monopolized our state government, the governor's offices, both houses of the legislature. And it is because of their policies, their tax and spend policies, that we are where we are right now. So the alternative at this point sure. is somebody else. And guess what? I am that somebody else, at least in District 22. Um, I happen to be a Republican. That is the vehicle that has gotten me to this point. Um, do I walk in lockstep with everything Republicans have to say and everything they have to stand for? Absolutely not. I'm my own person. It's just the Republican Party is the vehicle that got me to this election day. All right. But can you work beyond your party? Because what the Democrats are saying is that it's the last eight years of George W. Bush, which is, you know, the uh, I imagine at the time was the chief executive of your party, the representative. Right. Well, well, let's think about it, Reverend. Yeah, George Bush was the president for the last eight years, but which party has controlled the Congress of the United States for the last three years? Okay. It's been the Democrats. Yeah. We're in Plainfield right now. Who has been the congressman who has represented this community, Frank Pallone, a Democrat. Yes. We have had two Democratic United States Senators for the last 30 some odd years. So the Democrats have had their play in Washington as well. And to just sit back and blame George Bush for everything, I gotta tell you something, that is a real cop out. But, okay, all right. Maybe I'm in, um, I, maybe I'm on another. Because I have to remember the milk and honey time of William Jefferson Clinton. I mean, you know, I, I think that it would be almost quite mad for any of us not to realize that when um, William Jefferson Clinton was in office, it just seemed like just, just things was just so prosperous for everybody. That, uh, you know, I mean, jobs, I think that. Aircraft companies were selling them big aircrafts all over the world, and so many things was going on. So, how do we, you know, even begin to? Is there a comparison? What, you know, I mean, you know, and I think that's what the feeling well, is. Well, don't today. forget that while William Jefferson Clinton was our president, we had uh, a Republican Congress for a good part of the time as well. So it wasn't all Mr. Clinton. It was a Republican Congress as well, and they worked together. And there were many good things that happened during that era. So, but, but let me but, tell but, you something but, at the tail but end. But can, 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 the, can the Democrat and the Republicans work together today to solve the mess that we're in? Uh, if given a chance, sure. But right now, the Democrats have monopolized state government for the entire decade. Okay. All right. You know, we had we had the McGreevy administration early in sure, this decade, sure, sure. followed by the Corzine administration that we're in now, and the Democrats have controlled both houses of the legislature, all during that time, um, and then they have veto-proof majorities. I mean, they have monopolized things. Now, will they work with Republicans? Well, you know, perhaps if Chris Christie is our next governor, and and perhaps the assembly flips over to the Republican, we still have a state senate that's not up for election now, that will be Democrat, guess what? They're going to have to work together. But if we elect, if we allow John Corzine to buy yet another election, which he's attempting to do right now, uh, spending millions upon millions of dollars, and we allow, we keep sending the same people back to Trenton to be in our legislature, okay. like Jerry Green and Linda Stender, well, guess what? Shame on us. Well, we let me ask you the same okay, thing. okay, I was over at Ruckus uh, about two weeks ago. Ex-President uh, William Jefferson Clinton was there with... Uh, 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 John Cozon. Uh Why haven't uh, George W. Bush marched around with Chris Christie? I have no idea. I have nothing to do with the Chris Christie campaign, um, and I and I can't answer for him, and I can't answer for for Mr. Bush. Uh, Mr. Bush, since he left office, has pretty much kept a quiet private life. I would imagine his. Vice President has not. He's been pretty vocal, but sure. Mr. Bush has been quiet. Well, now listen, you know, I, I, I view the milk and honey days a little bit earlier than yours. I, I, I view the milk and honey days back into the, the 80s. When? President Reagan. 
Well, no. <laughs> well, I don't. I don't. I don't view. I don't, I don't view. Uh, Talk about prosperous times. That well, was a prosperous. I think time. that well, 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 jobs were created. Well, I, taxes I, went down. Well, I, I don't. I don't. Really America know. came I, I, back I to prominence in the world and was respected. Where when Jimmy Carter was our president, we were in a malaise. We had interest well, rates. Well, but but, but it's, it, it seemed to me that when the Republicans are in office, that. Uh, it's a different era where uh, they have more foreign policy, you see. Like, I go back to uh, uh, Jimmy Carter, and I remember after, uh, of course, Nixon and then Ford assumed his position. And uh, I remember uh, that it was a little bit rough when Jimmy Carter, because I'm Georgian, my whole family are Georgian, so we okay. definitely salute <laughs> Jimmy, I was at the inauguration, you know, seeing uh, Amy and uh, sure. Mark marching in the middle of the mother and, and, and Jimmy, right. and that was a good time for for the family. But now I I, I do remember when Reagan got in office, okay, and um, I do remember the building of the great missiles. You know, the MX missile was one, and you know things of that nature. Sure. And uh, but I don't remember the milk and honey time, but I do remember I remember the time when. Uh, President Reagan was saying uh, to, uh, uh, they were talking about the school lunch. At that time, I was, uh, you know, in high school, and they were talking about not giving us school lunch. And, you know, it was a whole lot of things, or maybe everyone could have a job, but they, it would be part-time, you know. Well, you know listen, I, I, I'm telling you, you know? Ta talk about domestic issues. Taxes went down for everybody, not just the wealthy, for everybody. Uh, times were prosperous. Uh, the unemployment I, rate was I, 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 I will salute President Reagan in terms of that he did bankrupt, in a sense, the Soviet Union. I remember Star Wars. You right. know, I remember when he said these words to, as he was in Berlin, Berlin Wall, he said, Mr. Go wall. Mr. Gorbachev, okay. tear this wall down. I remember right. that right there, you know. Right. And so, but I don't remember hey, that milk and I remember the unemployment very high. I, you know, I remember very high, but I do remember stimulus type jobs. Like I think that, um, not sure, but I think that uh, that General Motors car, the Saturn, come out of the Reagan administration. Right. And I think that was like a stimulus package type job. Could be. Which today I hear that that company is no. Unfortunately, yeah. yeah. Unfortunately. Well, you know, listen. There's you know, no question that. I, but listen, you can go to any. Right. You can go to any era, even sure. before you and I were born, yes. and, and find good times. And bad times, yes. and and certainly there were both in both the Reagan administration. But but but, but, but do, the, do the Republicans lean towards hardship, in terms of hardship, in terms of that? Uh, well, I mean, in terms of um, that, it need to be hard to make it. It seemed like when President Clinton got in office, uh, William Jefferson Clinton, that things seemed like the money and everything was just flowing so. Rapidly. Well, uh, I, I think, uh, and, and but, toward, but but let's be honest. Toward the end of his eight years, that we were heading into a depression, without a, not a depression, a recession, without a doubt. And, so and, then, and, when, and so the when first, George W. Bush got in the office, right, right, why didn't he straighten that out? He sure did. He sure did. The first thing he did was was, was cut marginal tax rates, which stimulated the economy again. The early part of this decade. So what happened, Martin? What happened? What happened where? In the United well, States? The, with the situation that we're in now, what happened? There's no question there is... An People are, are losing jobs. The houses are foreclosure. Right. Taxes are high. And, in, and, and in, all over. Not just here, because I was in Georgia a few months ago. They're crying down there also. But let me tell you something. Let me ask you a question. Why is it worse here in New Jersey? It's bad all over. Yes. Why is it worse here in New Jersey? Why do we have the highest property taxes yeah. in the nation? Why do we have the highest unemployment rate in the region? Why have we lost 500,000 people to other states where it's obviously better? Yeah. Why well, has that happened? It's because the policies in our state government are killing us here. Killing us. And it's not right. Uh, and and it, as long as we go down the same path, where government is the answer to anything, and it seems like the only answer we have is let's raise taxes. Over the last eight years, we have had 115 new or raised taxes. That is not the answer to everything. Okay. okay. The answer is to limit government. All right, right now we have Jerry Green and Linda Stender coming in. Jerry. Long time no see. Oh, yeah, how about that? <laughs> okay. You need another microphone? Uh, uh, yeah, well, Jerry, you can share this. Share this. Okay. Well, well, you share it uh, uh, by hand because if you pull it across, it's going to be. Okay. Uh, okay. Very tight. Go ahead. Yeah. Great. Um, 
Martin was just talking about the taxes and why that he believed that uh, if the Republicans got in office and U2 was out, that it would be that they could balance things, that they could level, make things on an even playing field. Well, in the state. I've uh, good afternoon. This is Linda Stender, and I am very pleased to be here with my uh, colleague in the assembly, Jerry Green, and to join with you, Reverend. And uh, I'm happy to have both of you. And uh, we like family. I see you guys last night. That's right. right. That's right. <laughs> and, uh, uh, my opponent here, Marty Marks, um, has been pretty consistent in being uh, uh, in his criticism of the tax situation, and and we know that we do have high taxes, but. The, the thing that he never talks about is that the fact is is that this economy is a nationwide global economy and that New Jersey is not worse off than other states. And in fact, because of the leadership of Governor Corzine, that we took steps early to uh, deal with the foreclosure, pending sure. foreclosure crisis and to deal with um, preparing people to get jobs and to cut the corporate business tax, and to put a program in place that created grants for new jobs. And the other piece of it is, is that um, what I never hear him say is that when we talk about the fact that, in fact, we cut the state budget $4 billion just as the uh, economy was tanking and the uh, revenues dropped.